So this is Ceanothus. It's a classic chaparral shrub. It's getting into its fall stage, autumn rather, because you can see all the leaves are basically just coming off. And it'll lose more than half its leaves to reduce its water loss during this period of drought, which is the third season in the chaparral. And they'll also curl up, facing away from the sun. So this plant is highly adapted to this kind of drought environment. Not only will the leaves drop and curl up, but it's got this incredible ability to survive water stress. What water stress is, you think about people having heart attacks. There's usually an embolism or something in their veins that stops the flow, uh, flow of blood. Well, there's a water column inside these stems, and what will happen is the less and less water there is, the more tight these little columns become, and then finally what will happen is the water column will break and there will be an air bubble that will separate, and that's essentially a heart attack in a plant. These plants have the ability to withstand that from happening, probably on the level of more than any other plant I'm aware of. So these things can sit in this dirt, dry soil for months, and then this next spring, which happens with the first rains in October, November, will come back. And that's why you see a lot of blooms and beautiful flowers in the chaparral in December and January, because that's the spring of the chaparral. Is it fair to say that these are the most adaptive plants, uh, in, in part because they're, they may be more plentiful than others? Well, you, you know, you have desert plants, which are cacti and that kind of thing, and they live in an environment where there's virtually no water most of the time at all. These plants adapt to an environment where there's quite a bit of water in the winter months, but there's nothing the rest of the year. So they get tricked into thinking they're almost like desert plants, but they can take advantage of that moisture during those three or four months in the winter. So, yeah, they're the most adapted for this particular environment. Otherwise, of course, they wouldn't be here. Yeah, yeah. And, and they have the most storage capacity or storage well, you know, they adaptation. They don't have storage capacity. They don't. No, they, they've got to grab it when they can get it. So they're unlike cactus and that kind of thing. So how do they survive for 10 months without water? <laughs> <laughs> they, they just hunker down. They shut, they, they I mean, they... They just basically shut down and hope that they can make it until the next rain and their water columns don't stress out and sometimes they do so I don't see any right here but these are um, it's June and these are in pretty bad shape in terms of water can you identify a few of those yeah these are all seen out this this is chaparral broom or crowdy brush brush um, there's buckwheat in there but this is the consummate chaparral plant is seen out this okay. these are the ones that cover the hillsides with beautiful blue that you've seen from probably time to time. Sure, of course. And then this plant over here, this is black sage. It's not a traditional chaparral plant. It's more of a coastal sage scrub plant. Uh -huh. But um, the difference between coastal sage scrub and chaparral, and most people kind of don't know this because it just looks like shrubs to them. But if you walk through coastal sage scrub, you come back smelling like a mint. <laughs> You try to walk through chaparral, you come back bleeding. So that's the difference. Oh, great. Sage scrub has very low growing, very fragile shrubs, where chaparral have these pretty gnarly, stiff, woody shrubs that can uh, really resist your, your hiking uh, ability.